What did you learn in Berlin? What did you learn about the European recession? Well, certainly the European recession is continuing, is spreading also to parts of the core like France. Uh, even Germany is slowing down because it's two major markets. One is the periphery of Eurozone is contracting and Asia and China are slowing down. So there is a Eurozone recession. It's fed by fiscal austerity is continuing. Mm -hmm. It's fed by strong Euro. It's fed mm -hmm. by credit crunch in the banks of the periphery and lack of consumer and business confidence. The, so we'll have right. another recession next year throughout the Eurozone. The Financial Times lists Mario Draghi as their person of the year. Do you agree? Yes, I do agree because by the summer the risk was of a complete disintegration of the Eurozone and his OMT announcement reduced those tail risks. So today the tail risk of Italy and Spain losing market access is lower. The risk of Greece for the time being exiting the Eurozone is lower. But the fundamental problems of the Eurozone remain. Mm -hmm. Lack of growth, recession, high private and public debts, lack of competitiveness, lack of structural reforms and issues of debt sustainability. So will the European recession weigh on the rest of the world when you look out to global growth forecast 2013? Well, it does. For example, some of the slowdown of exports of China is outright contraction of their exports towards the periphery of the Eurozone. You know, the Eurozone overall is as large as the United States in terms of GDP almost. And therefore, what happens in the Eurozone matters for Central Europe, for Latin America, for Asia and so on. Absolutely. There's almost a trilemma here. We were talking about it in Fed policy, and we'll talk about the U.S. here with uh, Professor Robini uh, as well. But the idea of a trilemma of problems lists for us the challenges Europe has besides slow growth, like Italy. Yeah. They have some corruption. They have inefficiencies. It's a static society, bad demographics. How do you prioritize those challenges? Well, there are short-term problems that are those of a recession and lack of economic growth, balkanization of the banking system, balkanization of public debt markets. But then it's also parts of the world where aging is occurring more rapidly than the United States, so potential growth is low. It's a part of the world where structural reform have not occurred and therefore productivity growth is low. So with low potential growth and high debt ratio, the debt dynamic could be in a situation which not just Greece but other countries are going to have unsustainable debt burdens. When I look at world GDP, forecasts and folks yeah. these are like in the United States but they're uh, uh, summed forecasts from OECD and others they all center around three percent is a sub three percent global GDP number is that your definition of a recession uh, no if uh, GDP growth was globally two and a half percent that will be a recession we're actually close to three percent in our forecast that will be in global economics but there's a big multi-speed recovery in advanced economies growth mm -hmm. is going to be barely one percent <clears throat> in emerging markets going to be slightly above five percent in some of the advanced right. economies right now like the UK like the eurozone like Japan well, we have outright recession and the US we have dynamic economic growth I want to come back Sarah I know has got a million questions just simply are you bullish on America uh, in the long term, I think that the fundamentals of the U.S. are much stronger than other advanced economies. In the short run, I think we'll have another year of very anemic economic growth. Next year, we're going to have a barely 1.7 percent, including a modest amount of fiscal drag. And there are lots of tail risks that could make it worse mm. for the U.S. A bigger fiscal cliff, the Eurozone crisis, the Chinese hard landing, maybe tensions that are going to rise the oil prices in the Middle East. So the downside scenario is actually having a meaningful probability.